Hello everyone, welcome to my video on backing up your photographs. In this episode we're going to talk about how I personally back up my photographs and my tips for you to back up yours. So let's get into it and see what it's all about. So we're here today to talk about backing up your photographs. This can get really technical and really complicated. I'm going to try and keep it as simple as possible. What I would highly recommend people do is having a few different copies. And the general rule of thumb in photography is to have at least three different copies. So I suppose you'd have one on your laptop or desktop computer, you'd have one on your, let's say, external hard drive. And if you haven't got an external hard drive, please buy one. They hurt, they hurt the world yet. They really are. They're cheap enough now. You can buy them for 100, 150 euros, maybe even 200 euros, depending on the capacity. Pop it into your desktop and transfer all your files over. You can thank me later. Honestly, if you're not backing up your photographs now, you're just nuts. So that's the first thing. So you have all your files again, photographs, on your desktop or laptop computer. You have them backed up onto an external hard drive. And thirdly then, you would have them backed up off site. And why I say off-site is, if your house burns down, heaven forbid, or apartment or wherever else you're living, office, studio, burns down, at least you have a backup off-site. Like, it, it's one of the things that, like, one of these anecdotal stories that people tell you is that, you know, oh my God, my neighbor's house went on fire, and they ran back in after they all out safe to get the cat and to get their photographs. Do you know? And you're kind of going, Jesus, like, <laughs> do you know? Photographs are incredibly important. They tell a story of our lives. Without them, we tend to forget things. You know, it's our memory fades. You look at a photograph and bang, you're right back there in the moment. So photography is incredibly important. So never forget that. Back up, back up, and back up. So three different formats, two in-house, one externally. What I'm using for my external backup is, that was my phone, <laughs> is uh, what's called Backblaze. And um, basically you've unlimited storage and it'll back up all your computer's content to the cloud. And you're going, it's, I think it's a cost about $60 a year and people are probably jumping back in their seats going, it costs $60 a year. But if you're a professional photographer, if you're someone who's taking this really seriously, you are probably paying a lot more than that in photography editing software. And that's just to edit your photographs. If someone told you it was going to cost you five or six hundred euros to recover your photographs from a damaged hard drive, would you pay it? This is going to recover your photographs, your videos, and it's going to cover also um, music, all things like that. So it really is a fantastic service. I signed up to it there about a week and a half ago. I'm actually still in the process of backing it up because there is, as I say, there's about, I think there's about 14 terabytes of information to go up. So it, it's very reasonable, it's very cheap, it does the job, it just works away silently in the back of your PC, you just switch it on. It's going to take a couple of weeks, but when you're talking about that much information, I mean, you know, you'd normally build that up over time. So, um, so that's the first thing. So Backblaze, highly recommended, love it so far, uh, it just works, simple as that. So um, the second thing I would recommend you do, especially if you're getting more serious into photography, is buy something along the lines of... Um, an ex a serious external hard drive or a NAS or something along those lines. And if you're asking me what is a NAS, then a NAS is simply this. It's a network <laughs> network attached storage device. So in this in this NAS drive, there's actually five bays. As it stands at the moment, I have two 10 terabyte hard drives fitted in it. And they're programmed so they'll mirror each other. So whatever's on one hard drive is on the next one. So if I upload eight terabytes of photographs onto that drive, it's automatically going to mirror to the second one. So in other words, if one of those drives fails, I'm still going to have a copy or a backup of it. So that's absolutely fantastic. So NAS systems are brilliant from that point of view. I was working with internal hard drives and external hard drives on my desktop PC, and it was a bleeding nightmare. Eventually what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit the five disks into that. So five 10 terabyte hard drives, which are going to be in a RAID 5 configuration. If this all sounds really complicated, just forget about all the numbers. 
you know, it, what it's basically going to do in RAID 5 configuration, it's going to give you 40 terabytes of storage. So that is absolutely insane. You know, that's going to do me for a long time. So, um, so I'm storing on my desktop PC, on an external hard drive, which I then give to a friend to store. And I also have it in my NAS drive and I have it backed up to the cloud. So basically speaking, if the house goes on fire, if a tsunami hits Ireland <laughs> and if all these other complications come true, I should still have my photographs. So that's the plan anyway. <laughs> this is a, an apocalypse or something, then we're all banjaxed. So I know a lot of people when they start looking at this and they start thinking, oh my God, you're gonna fit a 10 terabyte hard drive into a NAS drive. Now, if anyone just pauses the video and goes along and Googles the price of a Western Digital 10 terabyte red NAS drive, you're going to get a bit of a shock. You know, they're, they're probably up around 369, maybe 400 euros for a single drive. I mentioned I was going to put five of them into that. Um, it seems a bit nuts, but I have a shortcut. Uh, it's a very simple thing. I'm going to post a video on this again later on. It's called Hard Drive Shocking. And, you know, crazy name. But basically what it is, is companies like Western Digital, they produce their red label drives, blue label drives, black label drives, purple label drives. They have a whole lot of different drives. They're all designed to work in different environments. The red label drives are designed to be working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You know, it's just constant use they're industrial grade hard drives so they're built to last um you go to their blue range drives and they're more sort of home use purple is cctv then whatnot there's a massive variety there's green there's, there's black so they've, they're all different performance levels and whatnot but the ones generally you, most people would be looking for would be the likes of the red drives so if you want to buy one of those as i say about 369 370 maybe 400 euros for one of them but there is a trick. Hard drive shocking. What hard drive shocking is, buying something like the Western Digital My Book. So if you Google Western Digital My Book, and let's say you go to buy it off Western Digital in Ireland today, you will buy it for 219 euros for one 10 terabyte hard drive. You might say, oh, it's a small but expensive. But if you haven't bought anything off Western Digital before, directly, you can sign up to their newsletter and they'll send you out an email that gives you, I think is it a 10% reduction? Is it 10% or 5%? Jeez, I can't even remember now. But they'll give you a reduction. I, I'm gonna check that. I'm gonna put, put it down underneath here now or above here or something. Is the, so it's either a 10 or a 5% reduction on the price. But once you actually open those drive bays, what you will find inside is a red label drive that has been supposedly been relabeled as a white label drive. So the hard drive that's inside in this unit you're buying for, I think it works out at about 180, 190 euros or something. For that drive, it's nearly half the price of a red label drive is actually the same thing. Apparently, now I have a few friends in the PC line of things and um, and not political correctness, but computer repairs and the IT business. And they're telling me they actually are red label drives that have just just, just been relabeled as such. They're white label drives now. So um, if you Google it, you'll find out a fascinating amount of, bit of, a fascinating amount of information on that. Again, I'm gonna do a separate video on hard drive shocking because this is, a, this is a really cute hack. You can save yourself an absolute fortune. So just to repeat it, a red label drive for half the price. Hard drive shocking is the absolute bomb as far as I'm concerned. It has saved me an absolute fortune. It's why I have about six um, 10 terabyte hard drives around the place. That um, it really has saved me an awful lot of money. I suppose I truly understand how important these photographs are because when I started open photography at the very start, I was taking photographs like crazy. I, I filled up the space to my laptop, so I bought an external hard drive, as you do. I was using the external hard drive, I had all the, over, all the overflow of images on the external hard drive, and one day, one day while I was rummaging around, doing something to the back of the laptop, my elbow hit the hard drive, the hard drive literally just went horizontal, just fell over, never again worked afterwards. It actually damaged the drive itself, so I lost all those photographs, and that 
taught me an absolutely invaluable lesson. Definitely do back up your photographs. It's so blooming worth it because when you lose some of them, that's exactly when you'll realize how important these photographs are to you. So, um, other than that, um, all I'll say to you is I will be doing a video on hard drive shucking, showing you how to do it and just explaining it in a small bit more detail. I'm also going to be going to the NAS drive too as well. Again, you know, it, it, it's going to be reasonably straightforward, but just explaining what you can do and what it'll do for you. So, as I was saying, the best way to actually guarantee your photographs surviving through the years would be to have them on your desktop PC or laptop PC, or both, all the better if you've bought them, to have them on an external drive, which you're keeping here yourself, and to have them on another external drive that you give to a family member, and tell them, put it on top of a kitchen unit. Put it, or put it, you know, put it somewhere safe. And that it doesn't get knocked around or dropped or whatever else, you know. And that's as good as paying for cloud storage then. Just back it up maybe once in two months or once in three months. There's always the danger you might lose, lose your most recent work. But I mean, if you really want to stay on top of that, then as I mentioned before, Backblaze is an absolute steal. It's about $60 a year and you can back up everything on your computer. So absolutely everything on your PC, bar the operating system, of course. Yeah, that's basically it. I'm hoping to get another video out here on Wednesday. I'm not too sure if that's gonna happen or not because next week is looking absolutely mental. So uh, we'll see how that goes. So um, thanks again for watching. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. And uh, see you soon, everyone. Thanks again. I should say, see you all the time. Thank you.